Dalton, uh, last or after the game against Argentina, you spoke about one more week for greatness. Like, how are you sort of feeling about that right now? I think the the boys are in a pretty good spot. Um, you know, like I said in that comment, you know, this is the this is the moment on top of the mountain that everyone chases. You know, every every kid, you know, growing up, you know, you sort of have that thought, oh man, you know, one day I'd love to be there, but to make it a reality and to go through all the hard all the hard yards, you know, getting to this game, um, it's sort of it's making out it's going to be a big one, and uh, this is the game that we got to leave it all out there. So looking forward to it. And how do you manage to keep yourself down before the actual game and not play the test before you get there? Yeah, uh, it can be tricky, but um, the one thing that we know, uh, some of us players, we look we look up to the pl uh, leadership, and they they keep harping on about sticking to the process, that sticking to you know the the plan that's got us um, to where we are now. You know, week by week, just focusing on that and not overthinking it too much, because you know this the process is what is what has got us here uh, right now. So. I could sound like a broken record saying it, but it literally is. You just got to stick to the plan and the process week by week. Dalton, if you think back to sort of South Africa, I suppose, last year when Jace came in, took over with the Fords, what are the biggest sort of differences or improvements that you're seeing in the Ford pack now compared to back then? And, and how influential has, has Jace been in that space? He's probably been one of the best Fords coaches um, that I've had, and I've only had him for a short, short amount of time. I had him in under 20s, but you know, seeing his growth from there to when he came into the All Blacks, he holds everyone accountable. You, anyone, you could have 100 games or even one game, and he'll still call you out, and it sort of keeps you on your toes, which is a good thing. Um, it's pressure, pressure will always, you know, hold you accountable, and he does that. He does that, and the good thing is that I'm pretty sure you're well aware of that he's, he's got good banter as well. So, you know, he, he's a mate, but also he'll hold you accountable uh, when uh, when you're on the job. So he's been massive for uh, for the shift in the forwards, and, you know, I think he he's, he's pretty in a pretty good area at the moment. Shannon, would you agree with that? And we're seeing, you know, you're, you're in great form this year. How, how influential has, has Jason been in, in helping you discover that form? Yeah, like, like Dalton said, um, one thing I learned from Chase is his balance between his connection with his players and, yeah, just off rugby as well. Yeah. Dalton down the back. Um, do you still have to pinch yourself in this sort of situation? Kid from Pakuranga, all of a sudden about to play in a World Cup final. Does it seem real? Oh, I think, you know, going through the week, um, day by day, you know, you sort of... Like I said before, you're sticking to the process, so you're used to um, used to the plan and um, and the week. So you're, you're sort of not really thinking about it too much. But I think it will probably hit me when it probably comes to captain's run or the the morning of the game, where you think this is it, and it's going to be a lot of um, excitement levels in there. But I think what the leaders have done real well in this team is you know being able to put a cap on it and think, okay, boys, uh, realize that you're feeling this right now, but enjoy it, but when the, when the whistle blows, we've got a job to do. And um, I think it, it makes it more clear in the head, you know, where we talk about, you know, having fire in the belly and ice in the head. So we don't want to think about it too much, but I do have little moments throughout the day where I'm like, yeah, this is it. This is how good. <laughs> I mean, because you were national under-20s and blue, you know, blues, a lot of hard work, a lot of different teams to get to this, but do you, do you take a step back sometimes and think like that? Or, or Lead, it, leading into say a World Cup final, being an All Black in a World Cup final, I think you, I, I think you do still to sort of step back. But you know, you gotta, you gotta really know your role within a team. And I know my role has come in here, and you know, I'm, I'm trying to bring energy where we need it, and also just knowing my role. Because if I don't, you know, know my role, then, you know, I'm letting the team down. So, um, I think everyone has different roles within within the team, and um, yeah, going forward. Does this place remind you of St Kent's? Oh, St. Kent's is a little bit better, but... You know, no, no. <laughs> Shannon, how big is it for you, your family, your culture to be in a Rugby World Cup final this weekend? Um, yeah, it's pretty excited. For my first time on a World Cup final, but um, at the end of the day, it's 80-minute uh, rugby. It's the same as last week. Dalton, um, South Africa's got the bomb squad as, as a reserves bench. Do you have a name for yourselves? And and what kind of mentality do you take into the games? Oh, yeah. 
Well, funny this, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, we actually starting to watch, um, I've got a little group happening in the um, team room at our hotel, and we're watching Band of Brothers, and the, the 101st Airborne and the Easy Company. So I made a little joke, um, say, you know, um, you know, they got the bomb squad, and so we can we could have the Easy Company, which we <laughs> want to go in and finish the job and do, be in the trenches. But, um, yeah, talking about the, the bomb squad, man, they've proven themselves, and, and man, they, they can come on and change a game like that. So... Um, we, we've we've just sort of uh, we sort of need to identify you know whoever's on the bench and that need to really be um, screwed on up top and you know give it hell. Dalton, I'm not sure how much you players are fo focused or even following the bongi situation, but broadly speaking, how important is it that racism has no place in the game, and how important is it for you that the players are held accountable for something bigger than just the sport? Yeah, 100%, you know, I'm against racism. And I think, uh, you know, All Blacks as an organisation and players, we are fully against it. But, you know, there's, I think there's been allegation, but there's nothing been proven. So I can't really have anything to say on that because uh, whether true or not, I'm, I don't know. So, But I just want to know that all of us are against racism and it shouldn't be in our game. But I'm not going to comment on that because I'm, I'm not too sure if it's true or not. So, uh, Dalton, the squad's likely to evolve again. Sorry, just <laughs> it's going to evolve again after this tournament. But how special a moment will it be when Aaron leads the hacker on Saturday night, particularly for the All Blacks who are going to be moving on after this tournament? Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be um, he's gonna be real excited. Uh, he's gonna probably feel a lot of emotions. But he's another man. We are, when I talk about leaders, who he has he's got plans in place to you know pinch himself in moments, thinking I'm in this moment now, like. How, how exciting, but then he can flick a sw uh, switch and black, um, be like, yep, yeah, I'm into game mode now. So, um, yeah, and uh, there's a few leaders in the team that, you know, it's going to be their last sort of um, game in the jersey. So it's a big it's a big, um, big game for uh, for us and even the other players who are staying, knowing that we want to we want to send those boys out on the high, you know, how, mu how much they've put into the jersey. Uh, we're standing on their... On their um, What's that quote? It's uh, standing on the shoulders of giants. And I think it's, they, they're the ones, you like that? Yeah, you like that? Yeah. Yeah, so I think um, we got to give a lot back to them. And um, Nuggy, Aaron Smith, he's been at the head of the team for, for years now. Uh, and he's been playing the best footy. So I'm uh, pretty, pretty excited for him. Shannon, any quotes from you? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Dolts talking about those giants, um, Brody and Sam are uh, certainly giants of the All Blacks. Uh, they've been there, obviously, the whole time you've been in the All Blacks. What have you learned from those two, particularly, and as they get ready for their final, uh, their final All Blacks test, what will you remember most about those two guys, about what the tone they've set for this forward pack? I think um, both of them are two different people. Uh, one probably has a little bit more of a cool head, where the other one can give it, you know, give it hell. And that's 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 probably that's the balance they have between each other when they're when they're both playing together. That's that's what makes them so good, is because they're both ends of the spectrum, but it would just work so well together. But probably what I've learned from them is, you know, they just they're who they are, you know. Um, that all the, the ego or how much you put them on a pedestal. When you still go out and you know have a beer with them and all that, it's still them, and it, you can you can you know have a little banter with them and stuff like that, and that's what sort of makes those sort of relationships special, because you're not you're not looking up to them like oh you know you're not nervous they're making you feel welcomed, and those are two boys that have made me feel very welcomed when I did come into the team, and I remember I was the only one in the in that year for my first year coming in, so I was a bit daunting, but Whitelock and um, and Brody made it made it so much easier for their transition into you know being young. And coming in and making me feel welcome. So I, I do. I sound like a broken record, but I do. I, I have a lot to give for those leaders in the team, and those two men have been been awesome in my career. Um, Dalton, Jason was talking a bit about last night and the and the nice evening you guys had with some of the really experienced guys sharing a load of stories from their long time in the game. Can you give us a flavour of some of those stories, and you know maybe some of the funnier ones? I think it wasn't really um, anything funny, but it was more just um, it was quite special to hear um, some of the things they those certain players said from the heart. Um, 
you know, you think you know know someone, but once they open up and really be vulnerable in front of a team, it was quite special to hear. And I'm not going to repeat anything because I think that's more of a in team thing a thing. But um, it is truly something special when you hear those boys open up. And you know, those leaders have been through a lot in their careers, the highs and the lows, and the stuff off field and on field. And for them to open up, it it sort of makes you, you know, you feel welcomed and you're you're, you're you want to play this game for them because of what they've done and, and been through. So, oh, Cheer, boys. Um, do you guys have any pre-game rituals before the big match this weekend? I just sleep a lot and <laughs> woke up and playing cards. And yeah, that's all. Yeah, I don't really have anything, just sleep. <laughs> so, yeah, since it's 9 o'clock games or quite late games, we just need to fill the day up so you sleep. <laughs> Uh, g'day, Shannon and Dalton. Um, Dalton, you talked about just before, a question for both of you as well. Um, what goes through your head when you're walking out to an 80,000-seater stadium? Because, uh, you, you know, you touched on it a little bit, being you know, from Pakaranga and whatnot, but I can't imagine that it, you know, it feels a little bit different than playing Saturday morning rugby, small suburban grounds, high school and whatnot, and those small sort of NPC grounds. Just what are you thinking when you're walking out with your teammates, standing for the national anthem, then you're doing that huck in front of some very, very loud uh, people? I think, uh, to be honest, I know it used to be a bit daunting going out there with so many fans there, the whole uh, world of rugby is watching. So, But um, one thing in the All Blacks I've learned is we don't shy away from those moments. Uh, what really changes you is is not walking away from those moments but actually looking for those moments and, and walking towards them. So when I go out on the field, um, every time I go on the field, I run when I'm about to warm up or when I'm about to go on the field, I, I can't help but smile and, and just... You know, thank everything in my life for being in uh, being in on, in that um, in that stadium on that field, and it's just it's just quite overwhelming. But once that um, once that uh, national anthem starts, that's when I start to get a cool head and start to think of the job at hand. Uh, Dalton, you talk about knowing your role. Sorry, back here. Um, you talk about knowing your role, but is there any frustration from your end about being stuck behind your captain for that starting seven spot when he's playing so well? Yeah, you know, and I've had so many people ask me that question, uh, but at the end of the day, I'm I'm here to win a World Cup, and whatever it takes, whatever the team needs, I'm going to put my hand up and say I'm going to do it. And, you know, you have feelings like that here and there, but this is a World Cup. They only come every four years, and... And you never know if you're going to make a final, a final again. So this whole, this probably this whole tour, I've, I've put my hand up saying whatever the team needs, whatever my role might be, starting on the bench or even not playing, what, do this, what does the team playing need from me that is going to prepare them to play their best on, on the game day. So, um, yeah, you get feelings here and there, but, man, he's playing some awesome footy. That's one man I've been picking his brain and maybe be getting annoying because I'm just <laughs> trying to learn off the best. But, um, yeah, he's been playing some good footy and whatever I need to do to make this team um, in the best shape for the game, I'm going to do. Dalton, just, just up the back here, uh, just touching a little more on last night. I respect you don't want to necessarily go into exactly what was said, but can you tell us... Were there a few tears last night? And is it helpful to get that emotion out of the way early in the week before such, such a big game? Yeah, there were a few tears. And, it's, and I think that's awesome to see, you know, players showing vulnerability and also just opening up, opening up about how much this, this tour and this sort of game means. And, you know, there was something saying, you know, this is probably one of the most important games of All Blacks history because, you know, the, for an All Blacks team to, you know, sort of... Went through a bit of a hard path to get here. Media, you know, friends, family, even criticising us and all that, and we stuck together. And we weren't, we weren't even said to be in the final. And now look at us, we're here. So I think it, a lot of different players take it dif uh, differently. And I think some of the, the older players probably were hit a little bit harder. And it was good to see, you know, the, uh, just a bit of the emotion and and the want from them and seeing that just gives gives all the other players an extra two three percent to think okay we're going to the well um, and we're gonna we're gonna give it all so Jace another springboks battle no doubt will be um, pretty intense up front how do you assess 
the strides your forward pack has made over this tournament? Um, well, we got to the final, so that's not a bad um, stride. I think that um, you know, we've made some good progress in a few areas. Um, and I think that uh, you know, we're trending in the right direction and looking forward to decent crack at it against the box, someone that we respect immensely. When you came into this job, I think you described the pack as being dented. How proud of you uh, are you of the progress you've been able to oversee in this Ford pack since you came into the job to now? Yeah, I think, you know, extremely proud. The boys have shown a lot of care and challenged them in different areas and um, on the training field and had some good, honest conversations in our meetings and we've set ourselves up to, to you know, give ourselves a chance. So I think, um, yeah, I'm extremely proud of what we've achieved and we've got one to go. What, what do the box bring that's different to Argentina and Ireland? Um... Oh, I think that you know their set piece is obviously phenomenal. The you know big team, they um, they've got a really clear identity of way they the way they want to play, and um, they they got some good little bits of variation around how they use the ball as well. So two different teams, I guess, when you look at four pack wise, uh, you know they're really clear as I said on their identity as a four pack around their scrum and more. And how proud have you been you know, of your front row and your young props in particular, uh, Fletcher, uh, Tamaiti? Tyrell and, <coughs> of course, um, yeah, your other starting. Ethan? I'm proud of all of them. They've all been competing, um, the whole lot of them, all the hookers as well. You know, like, um, they've all given themselves a, a chance to be selectable and we've got faith in the whole lot of them. Kia ora, Jace. Um, defence and discipline are critical factors in the game. So how important is it for the likes of Dane Coles, Cody Taylor and Tyrell and Lomax to step up and lead the way with the forwards? Yeah, it's um, oh, accuracy is a big part of discipline, like, I think we often you talk about discipline, but you know, reality is it's just you've got to be accurate. Discipline can mean you can be sometimes a little bit passive as well. And this contest, uh, this contest is going to be a title fight. It's going to be um, huge, and um, accuracy and momentum shifts are a big part of it. Um, momentum shifts; they'll swing, you know, and they can swing really quickly. And um, you know, the scoreboard can change quickly, and both teams can score and get momentum. So. Being accurate around the park is quite an important one. Hi, Jason. Um, can you just explain what the emotions like? You've got a couple of old heads in Brodie Rotelic and Sam Whitelock in your last test. Have you spoken much around that? And what's it like for you to be feeling farewelling guys like that? Yeah, we definitely haven't talked about farewells. We've talked around um, this week being the best that we can. Um, we had a, a quite a nice night last night as a team, and some of our experienced leaders spoke around what it's been to be an All Black and um, their previous experiences in World Cups as well as some of the younger boys. So um, that's that's been a special part of our week and it was quite a nice time last night just listening to some of those guys who, you know, anyone that's played 100 tests, you've got a couple of stories, haven't you? So it was good to um, listen to those boys. G'day, Jason. Uh, just more on Fletcher Newell and Tamaiti Williams. What have you seen from them in particular over the last couple of weeks that has allowed them to be your two main props come off the bench? Because for the most part, it seemed it was uh, Nipala Lala and Offa Tonga Farsi beforehand. Yeah, I've sort of really answered that question. We've got um, a lot of confidence in all of our props. It's not just about those two. Um, they've, all, they've all proven themselves really well. Um, they've taken their opportunities when they've been given them. Uh, Jace, no farewells just yet, but what legacy do you think Aaron Smith will leave behind? Oh, yeah, pretty pretty special one. He's um, you know, he's been you know right up there, the best halfback in the world for a long time. He's a phenomenal man. Um, always had so much respect for for Nug and the way he played the game when I was involved with Super Rugby and just his energy and um, the way he challenges and barks at his four pack is good. Keeps everyone honest and. You know, I think that he's, you know, been, you know, not only a great legacy, but you know, he's a great New Zealander. To be fair, Jace, um, obviously the the box bomb squads have been a big part of their identity the last few years in particular. How much um, thought do you put into trying to counter that? Yeah, we could take some gas out of that bomb, wouldn't it? They, uh, <laughs> they, um, you know, they, as I said it before, they've got their. They've got their, um, I guess, their DNA as a four pack, and you know it shifts momentum for them. But we've got trust in our our plan this week, and we believe we'll be able to um, be there right to the end. Chase, back out. Um, 
the Springboks let themselves down a little bit in terms of their performance. Do you expect them to be you expect a real backlash because of of the way they they went in the uh, semi final, uh, you know, plus World Cup final, All Blacks and all of that. But more to do with their performance. Do you do you expect a a big backlash from them? I don't think they let themselves down their performance at all. They're, they're playing in a final. Doesn't matter if you win your semis or your quarters by one point or thirty. You just got to get to the final. So totally different game. Um, I think that's you know they'll be they'll have confidence. They know to win World Cups and. They love the big stage as we do, and they're the current world champions, and they hold the trophy. So, I, don't, I think last week's irrelevant. To be fair for this game, this whole competition, what's happened before is irrelevant. J Jason, the underquitting. Um, we all know that the Springboks always bring physicality. They beacon their brutes. What have they added different? What layers have they added different, both in the forwards and in the backs, to this current team? Yeah, well, I think I think that's the physicality. It's a big. Big challenge, um, obviously, when you when you're looking at previewing test, test matches and, and, and rugby teams, especially as a forwards coach, you know, like they, as I said before, they they really pride themselves on their physicality and they're good at it. It's it's a big part of what they do. I think they've also brought some good variation in some of their lineouts they do and their, their defence is um, right on. You know, they're pressuring teams and they're good around the breakdown and. I think there's all parts of their game that they've just been um, chipping away at to set themselves up for um, this final. Jace, could you just speak a, a little to Sam Kane's role in this team? Um, obviously, you know, he's had his critics, he's had, um, unfair or not, he's, he's really led the response this year. Just what have you seen from him? How important a figure has he been and how steely is, in, is he in your, in your defence? It was about three questions there, wasn't it? Um, I think Sam has um, he he's really grown as a captain. I think he's he's really um, I think he's really fronted in the last couple of weeks, in particularly um, on the field. You know, he has good conversations. He's got a phenomenal leadership group around him as well, which is which is an important part of it. You know, most of those guys are helping him out, but I think that you know he start he started to get his body right as well. You know, he's had a few a few niggles and a few injuries, but that's behind him and, you know, he's got confidence in his shoulder and he's, um, you know, his work around the ground and the collision area has been right on form. So I think that's a big part of him, um, you know, when he's, you, you play well first and then and then you're leading, if that makes sense. Is that me? <clears throat> just down the back with the workers, Jason. Um, the, just back to the bomb squad, do you think we've become a little overly enamoured with this bomb squad and maybe the referees even have stars in their eyes late in the game over the bomb squad? Um, no, I, I just think they're, they're playing to their strengths and I think that, you know, it's a big part of what they do and, you know, it's it's work for them. So, you know, we, we've got a, as I said before, we've got a good plan. I, I think that, you know, the, the referees will make their decision on um, what they see and, those pitches have got to be pretty clear, especially in big moments. To be fair, how do you think the scrums? How do you think the scrums have been generally reft so far? I think it's been pretty consistent. To be fair, I think there's been you know, a couple here and there that you know the timings might have been a little bit off, but you know the conversations are happening all the time behind the scenes, and um, they're trying to do the best they can along with the ARs, and the communication's been pretty open. Um, you know, a decision can happen pretty quick when you've got 16 guys trying to hit each other at full force, <laughs> to be fair. But, um, yeah, no, we're, we're chipping away. A lot better than what they were used to a few years ago. And, and just quickly, you personally, and what a week this is for you. How are you enjoying this sort of pressure into a cup final? Yeah, well, look, the pressure's, you know, a privilege. I, I guess we, you know, for myself, it's just a massive opportunity to represent my country, you know, like... All I can say from a personal level is just the messages, I guess the whole team and the All Blacks that have had from New Zealand and our country um, the last few days and this week has been unbelievable, the support that's coming in and you know the, the people you know doing their shops in black and w we feel it and um, there's been a lot of messages, emails, voicemails. Um, it's just special that the country's behind us because it's the country's team. Jace, obviously a long history between the All Blacks and South Africa going back through the years, 1995 and, and various other tours. Do you dig into that this week or does a World Cup final sort of speak for itself in terms of motivation? Yeah, well, definitely the history is a big part of it, isn't it? You know, like you sort of build that up 
probably more towards the end of the week, you feel that. We've just got to make sure we get our game right first and foremost and you know, we, we believe we've got a clear plan around that and then as we get closer to the game, the old mental you know, side of the, the week kicks in and you know, you can, you know, we t talked a little bit around the legacy last week but there's no secret, it's been a massive tradition, it's, it's awesome, you know, you, we still, you know, you love going to South Africa as, as being a part of the All Blacks and getting into some Biltong and some Bryce. It's just a special place to tour and, and they, they bring a special part of their game that, you know, I think makes it the, uh, just a great r rivalry and to be doing it in a World Cup final is just, you know, that, that's when you want to be playing, that's when you want to be coaching, it's all you want to do is set yourself up for a gold medal. So we're looking forward to that and the history is going to be pretty special. Jason, is uh, Racy Erasmus a bomb squad in his own, or how would you summarise him in three words? <laughs> in three words? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Passionate? Authentic? I haven't got another one. It'll do. <laughs> I haven't really thought about Racy, to be honest, at all. Jason, did the scrumming of Ox Nietzsche Catch your attention? Telling you, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it does. It's, uh, he's some human, isn't he? Wow. But um, he, yeah, I think he, um, he's pretty strong at what he does. And, but, um, you know, we've got, we've got a pretty good plan that we believe in as well. We, uh, we'll be up for it. Jason, just down the back here. Can I just ask you about Ian Foster? I mean, everyone knows that uh, he's been through quite a bit over the last couple of years. Uh, endured a lot of a lot of pressure. Can I just ask you what it's been like to be alongside him on that journey? What you've observed, and especially, I suppose you've had a, a I suppose a front row seat to everything that he's been through over the last couple of years. Can I just get you to talk to what that's been like for you to observe, and I suppose how it feels, I suppose, to for you and for him to now be at this point. Oh, I think one of the great things about love, uh, the great things about Foz is just how much he loves the All Blacks. You know, it's all about the team, every decision he makes, and. Um, you know he's, you know yeah clearly he's been through a lot, but the All Blacks have been through a lot. To be honest, it's never about one person in the All Blacks, and that's what um, that's what's been um, impressive to me. Uh, g'day, Jason. I know you, you said you haven't thought about Rassi at all, but last week and in the ensuing weeks before that, he, he did kind of play a lot of mind games and was talking about you know picking teams and. Uh, talking about the refereeing, what might happen. Do you expect a few more mind games from him and, and does that have any kind of impact on the on the game on Saturday? Not sure and no. Sure, thanks. Hi, Jason, how are you going? Just on the, the scrum front, uh, how has it been to work with Greg Feek as a coach, but maybe as a character as well? Interesting bloke. Yeah, he's done a great job, Feeky, and, um, you know, really... Uh, Impressed with how he's taken our four pack, you know, in the scrum particularly. He's done a great job with our props, and he's got a lot of international experience as well. 100 plus tests for Ireland, so he's um, he's got the detail there, and um, he's done some good work with the boys. And he's got good banter. Um, Jason, good afternoon. Um, firstly, what have you made of the Bongi Met and have the box missed Malcolm Marks through this tournament? Um, oh, look, Malcolm Marks, great quality, you know, world-class hooker, isn't he? But, um, yeah, I think he's he's played big minutes and, you know, he's done a good job for them and um, good on him. And what do you make of the Bongi Monambi Met? So, apologies, I just missed the last of that. What do you make of the Bongi Monambi Met that's swirling at the moment? Oh, yeah, look, it's, it's in the background, isn't it? I haven't read too much about it. I understand it's in World Rugby Sands. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. To stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald, click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here. And head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.